Hi, and welcome to the positioning portion of the chest. This is a continuation from the anatomy PowerPoint that you just viewed. Um, just as an FYI, as we're going through here, you may want to follow along in your chapter two of your Bond Trigger book, because that's what we will be working out of in lab this week. For lab, we will be concentrating on three positions, your PA in lateral, both of those will be done upright. If your patient's unable to do these upright, then we will do a D cube. So you will be responsible for three positions for your evaluations for me in a couple weeks. That will be again PA, lateral, both of those upright, and you will either have the right lateral or left lateral decubitus. PA chest x-rays. Um, we always try to get the patient upright. You do need to apply shielding to the back of them. This can be one that you use the half apron, or you can use the lead apron that you slide behind them um, on wheels. We set our SID for 72 inches, and we place our patient up against the board. You do need to go through and ask those questions about jewelry, um, remove the bras, place them in a gown with the opening in the back prior to bringing them in for your positioning. You can set up your room prior to bringing them in as well. So what do we look for on a PA chest x-ray? You need to look for those apex, the carnea, the base, your diaphragm, which falls through here, your costophrenic angles, um, the hilum and aorta. Um, so basically anything um, that is demonstrated on your chest x-ray you need to know for the test. Um, you may apply your right or left markers. PA is not as, as essential as placing those um, markers indicating which side. And remember that when you hang these, because it's a PA chest, you are going to turn your film around and hang it as though you're looking at it AP. And I'll sh show you that in lab as well. On a lateral chest x-ray, again, we're looking for the lungs, we're looking for those costophrenic angles, um, we're looking for that diaphragm again, and we want to make sure that they're nice and straight along here on the back. Mediastinum, the heart and great vessels, trachea, um, all of those are important but not as essential. You still want to see that they're not burned out, but we're primarily focusing on from here, your apexes, down to here, your costophrenic angles, and along through here where your diaphragm is falling. Positioning considerations, we need to take a look at the body habitus. Um, like I said prior in your anatomy section, if they are a hypersthenic patient, you may want to put your cassette in crosswise. For our purposes this week, we will be doing everything lengthwise. Um, breathing, we need to watch our patient breathe and we need to take our exposure on inspiration. Basically, you are going to tell them to take in a deep breath, let it out, take in another deep breath, hold it, and then you will take your exposure. In regards to protection, we want to use that shielding. We want to make sure that we have evidence of collimation and no repeats. Technical factors for these, um, it varies from hospital to hospital. So some places will use 90 kVp, and I've seen them use up to 120 kVp, which means because of that difference in kVp, your mass could be anywhere between 1.5 up to 5 to 10 mass, depending on what kVp has been selected. So for our purposes of lab, I want you to tell me 110 kVp and about 2.5 mass. And that's what we will use for all, all patients in lab this week. SID will be 72 inches, and we do use a grid. Um, so if you're using the upright bucky, there's a grid built in. If we are doing a D-cube on the table, we will grab that grid cap that I showed you prior, and we will use that in addition to our cassette. Cassette sizes 14 by 17. Your grid cap will match that 14 by 17. Markers, um, right or left markers, I prefer if you use the left and we will place those in the top upper corner. Um, pediatrics and geriatrics, you do need to take those into consideration. Most pediatric patients can fit on a smaller cassette size. And so if you're using a digital plate, you want to collimate down. Um, if you're using a CR plate, you could probably get away with a 10 by 12 on those younger children. Geriatrics, um, just be aware many of them may come in on a stretcher or in a wheelchair. Um, and unable to stand, and in that case, we may have to do an AP rather than a PA. 
breathing instructions will always be a second inspiration. So you again, take in a breath, let it out, take in another breath, hold it, and then take the exposure. Um, we will do these erect, and the my reason for having an erect x-ray is so that they are able to take in a fuller breath. Um, so the more air that we can get in, the more it pushes that diaphragm down out of the way and we can see more of the lung field. See our placement, bony landmarks um, that we're going to look for. You want to find that jugular notch. Typically we're going to go a couple inches above the jugular notch, or you can also use the hand spread rep where you're measuring from your pinky to your thumb and you're measuring out seven inches from the top of the jugular notch. When you use that hand spread method, basically it falls three to four inches below the jugular notch. Orientation, again, depends on where you're at for hospitals. Most of them will do um, crosswise. Um, we are going to do lengthwise for our purposes, just so that you're doing lengthwise for lateral and lengthwise for your PA. Digital considerations, you want to collimate down to help decrease scatter. This will help to improve or increase your contrast levels on your films, which is your dynamic range. You're going to center, um, and we're going to use what's called automatic exposure control. Um, if, so if you set up the manual technique, you'd set it at 120 at, um, or 110 at 2.5 or 5 mass, and then your AEC actually will select that technique for you, and I will demonstrate how to use that in lab. So when you're using the AEC, the machine's actually choosing what technique it wants to use for you. We always follow Alera, so as low as reasonably achievable with our technical factors, so higher KVPs, low mass are ideal. Um, but like I said, we do have a facility that uses 90 KVP, and that's just because the digital plates are so sensitive now that you can actually get away with lower techniques on these patients. Exposure indexes, or S values, I'm going to show you these in lab. Um, on our Fuji system, um, it's inversely proportional, so the higher your number, the lower the dose. Um, and with the CR system, I'll show you where to find those S values as well. So when we take our first exposures on the phantoms, I'll actually point these out to you and explain what those exposure indexes mean. Position of the chest, we're going to go through the PA and lateral, but also be aware for the test, you need to be familiar with the other positions, and we'll touch upon those in class on Monday. So the PA lateral and D cubes we're going to focus on in lab, but you do need to be familiar with these other positions that are listed in your book. Also understand that soft tissue neck studies can be done. You're basically going to do an AP and a lateral on these, um, and we're going to use less KVP when we're doing these. Um, we're not going to cover those for evaluations, but you may be required to do those when you get out to internship. You'll also learn more about these when we do esophaguses, um, when we get into the contrast study exams in winter semester. So for a PA chest, 14 by 17, you're going to place it in lengthwise, um, smaller for a pediatric. You have your grid built into your bucky tray. We use a high KVP, low mass. So for our purposes, if you tell me 110 KVP at 2.5 mass, um, that's what I expect you to know for right now. You're going to shield your patient, use 72 inches, and collimate down to your image receptor. So your patient is upright facing the image receptor. Your chin is going to be raised up. We do roll the shoulders forward to help bring the scapula out of the lung field. We want our mid-sagittal plane to be perpendicular to our image receptor. We will center on the level of T7, and you're going to take your exposure on the second full inspiration. 72 inches is required for your SID. This helps decrease magnification of the heart. And so ideally, you don't want to do x-rays at 40. You do want to take them at 72. Otherwise, it's going to appear that they have cardiomegaly on their film when the radiologist is reading them. So when we're evaluating our chest, we want to make sure that we see those apices, so those apex of the lungs, costophrenic angles, you should have those scapula moved outside of the lung field, so you can see the scapula right here. No rotation, they've done a full inspiration, no motion, a nice long scale of contrast, or a wide dynamic range, and you should see the faint outline of those vertebral borders. 
lateral chest x-ray, we put the left side so that the heart's the closest to, again, decreased magnification of a heart. We use the 14 by 17 lengthwise with the grid, which is built into your Bucky. Um, right now, just again, 110 at 2.5, if you can remember that. And then we're going to bump it up to 5 mass for our lateral. So you're going to use slightly more than the PA. Keep your sit at 72 inches, collimate down, and again, use shielding um, on your patient. So we want the left side against the image receptor. Make sure their back is nice and straight. You may have to put your hand on the shoulder blades and back to make sure that they're lined up. We are now centering along the coronal plane. We're going to raise the arms up and out of the way so that they don't interfere with the lung field. And again, take that on the second full inspiration. So on our chest x-rays, here's our entire lung field that we can see from the apices down to those costophrenic angles. Here's the diaphragm. Make sure the chin is out of the way, arms are out of the way, there's no motion, there's no rotation on the back. Again, a nice wide dynamic range. And we want to faintly see the ribs through the heart shadow. AP chest x-rays can be done on the portable and we'll demonstrate the portable in lab and how to do these. You're going to use a 14 by 17, place that crosswise. Um, some people you may want to place an image receptor lengthwise, especially on those really tall individuals because they'll have the nice long lung fields. You again roll the shoulders out of the way if you can. Central ray is going to be the mid-sagittal plane and still T7. You're going to use a 72 inch SID. Um, if you can't, then you try to get as close to 72 inches as you can. So if there's room limitations, try to get as close to 72 as you can. We're going to still take it on a second full inspiration, and you're going to use a grid cap, but understand that the purpose of grids is to clean up contrast or clean up the scatter. If um, your facility doesn't use a grid cap, it's because they're trying to, do, to demonstrate a longer scale of contrast. And then if you don't use a grid, you have to adjust those technical factors for a no grid, since everything I've been teaching you is about a grid. So on an AP, it'll look something like this. You can see one of the problems with the AP is that your heart is going to be slightly magnified. Sometimes that chin rolls into your image. Sometimes it's very difficult to get the scapula out of the way. Um, and if there's air fluid levels that we're trying to demonstrate, it's very difficult to see those as well. Lateral decubitus will have to be done if you have to do AP, so if your patient's not able to stand, you'll do your lateral decubitus. Your patient's going to be on your left or right side, um, depending on what you're looking for. A 14 by 17 image receptor with a grid cap, again, depends on the hospital you're at, but for our purposes, we're going to use a grid. Same technical factors you used for your PA. Your mid sagittal plane will be perpendicular to your image receptor. Your centering is still on T7. You want to raise those arms above the head, and you're shooting with a horizontal beam. So in here, you're going to demonstrate the entire lungs. You can actually see that line where that air has risen and the fluid has started to settle. So your arms are out of the way, no motion. You can see the vertebrae. You have a nice long scale of contrast or a wide dynamic range. Lord, I